I could stock my fridge with every vegetable on earth and I would still eat chips and hummus for dinner because I am lazy. Well, I wandered aimlessly around Rite Aid for about an hour before I realized why I was there. <laughs> Rolled off my flip-flop the other day and now my ankle hurts so bad I can't jog just in time for summer bathing suits. Nice. I scaled a wall and almost got mauled by a dog to save my cat. I'm living on the edge, people. You're a real hero. Have such a good day. everyone and welcome to the best day you're gonna have since sliced bread at least the pretty good day where did sliced bread come from <laughs> <laughs> probably sometime in the 50s the answer may Wonder surprise bread. you <laughs> yeah like you don't even have to slice your own bread we it's should do slice. A, we should do a whole episode on like these weird um, expressions and where they came from I love that kind of thing it's one of my favorite things uh, yeah. it, it for sure and there are there are lots of them and like, I like to use them, and often I don't know what the origin even is. Like I, like a, I feel like a, a hand basket, or what, what is Helen it? Helen a hand basket. Yes, going That's to Helen a hand basket. Yes, we've talked about that. In fact, yeah, I think we have on a previous episode of Have Such a Good Day. <laughs> That's actually the podcast you're listening to, or perhaps are right even now. watching the video feed of. This is the show where Heather and I, Sarah unpack some pretty absurd things yeah just sort of everyday things that we think about that we talk about with friends <laughs> and those are absurd things they are well, yeah they it's, are, it's not much. like it's not like a show about like what's the craziest thing in the no, world no not at all but we find everyday life rather absurd and you do if you if you observe little things and just your daily routines that you analyze it and it and it can come across pretty weird so heather for our five dollar on up patrons we'll talk about patreon a little bit later in the the show but that's how our community uh helps us keep afloat what do we have for our bonus topic at the end of the show which which is for our five dollar and higher patrons thank you very much well sarah this is a heavy topic okay what harsh truths do you prefer to ignore hmm prefer to ignore or do ignore so, so yeah so essentially like something that you know is true but you kind of hide behind it because you don't want to accept it kind of thing okay all right well yeah. we've got the whole show to think about what our answers are and so do you uh, uh patreon.com slash have such a good day if you want to know more about what other cool things patrons get on a variety of levels but i guess for now we'll kind of start off talking about the absurdities of our week heather but so yeah how is, was your week my week was you know, it's funny when I think about, okay, what, do, you know, what kind of have I done in the last seven days since we all saw each other? I'm often like, I don't know, I worked, I walked to my dog, I went grocery shopping, I made some dinner, I watched Game of Thrones, can't say that anymore, but I used to do that, you know, like clockwork, and it, it there are cer certain times where I'm like, routine, like nothing was off my routine, mm -hmm. it was just my routine, yeah. which has been my routine for some time now, mm -hmm. but... I did have a cool thing that uh, is actually an experiment that I'm doing for one of my other podcasts, Daily Tech News Show, and it's actually for their patrons as well because we, we, we work with Patreon on, on that show, and that is trying out a certain like technology gadget or service or oh, something fine. for a few months yeah. and just making a ton of notes, something I've never had before, and then, and then giving everybody my honest I love it. answer. So what are you going to do first? Well, I've already done um, some wireless Bluetooth headphones. So that is already over. That was cool. started a few months ago and has ended. But my new project is smart light bulbs. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And for as like technology focused as I am, it's just something I've never gotten around to before. Mm -hmm. You know, like I thought that they were cool in other people's houses. I mostly understood how it all worked, mm -hmm. but I just never had anything like that in my house. And again, like I've only had them for a few days, so there's lots of notes to take. But it's, it's, it is like magic, even if you know how something works, to just be like, Alexa, turn on the living room light, mm -hmm. but dim it a little. Now make it red. I love it. You know, it's just like I'm having so much fun with this modern like Jetsons mm -hmm. life that I'm living, mm -hmm. and I still the kind of weird thing about it is is that I have a lot of overhead lights in my apartment. 
but they're a different size. Like smart bulbs don't really go in there. Mm -hmm. But I have enough lamps that I've, you know, I've scattered them around. So they fit in normal lamps. Yeah, there's normal okay. light bulbs. Okay. And then there's an app and you connect it to your Wi-Fi network and, mm -hmm. you know, there's some setup involved, but sure. it's not rocket science. Well, <laughs> it's probably going to trip somebody up, but it was okay for me. But, but, but there's a lot to learn because it's all about like, it's not just like, oh, I can, you know, voice command my lights off if like I forget to turn a light off and I want to just go to bed mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. want to go back in the living room or something like that's cool but it's better to be like so my new experiment is and uh, spoiler alert for any DTNS people who listen to both shows but whatever it's um it's my new thing is at 6 30 a.m because mm -hmm. there's a lamp right next to my bed start over the course of 20 minutes lighting up I love that so it's as if the sun <laughs> is rising next to me it's so cool so you can program that yeah that because so cool. I have windows in my room and mm -hmm. they do get lighter obviously as the sun comes up but it's not the same mm -hmm. it's different like this is like very like concentrated uh, sp specific period of time and also a little bit more dramatic right because mm -hmm. it's a light right next to me mm -hmm. rather than like the window what color is it this it's, light bulb. It's just a. It's okay. just a regular bulb. It's not red. You don't have like a. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it's like a. It's just a solid reading light. But I mean, you can you can change a variety of things mm -hmm. within it, not just the brightness. But mm -hmm. yeah, you can set stuff over time, or be like another thing that I did just for fun because I'm trying to like not stay up too late, like dilly dallying and being on the internet. Is I go to bed, and if at 11 p.m. I have not gone to bed yet. The light just goes off. Oh, that's great! And whatever I've got <laughs> needs to be put down, and it's time to do go to bed. Do you follow that? Do you follow that rule though? Well, I just started doing okay. it, and so last night I was like reading for not even I, I I had forgotten that I even programmed this earlier in the day, but I was like, what what happened to the light? Oh, I did that. That's funny. It that must you forgot. be eleven because I knew I had to get up really early this morning, yeah. so I needed my beauty sleep. <laughs> anyway, so I well, you look beautiful. Thank you so much. But I'm having the best time because it's so like fun. there's so many like little they call them skills and mm -hmm. and the some the light bulbs have some of their own like hey why don't you try this program mm -hmm. you know uh, and then Amazon or Siri or variety of systems that you can. Um, play around with they've got their own little I don't know it's almost like little games that you play I with your it. lifestyle so fun yeah I want to do it. I, I definitely it's on my list to get some and uh, there's one sort of silly thing that I know this is sort of a basic skill that they could do but I often have I, every night I have this problem I get in bed my cats settle in and they they, fl they 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 flank me and they kind of lock me into this position before I can even move and then I can't reach my lamp and it's and then when <laughs> I, if I if I if I reach too far they get all they get all, get all upset and then they wander off and then it's a whole thing hmm. so it's like I just want to be able to tell my lamp to turn itself off the, so badly this is the perfect use yeah. case you would you would buy a single bulb like it'll you, I'm going to yeah I think you'd probably like that a lot that and would I, it would solve everything or just get a clapper. Oh, I know. I, I've already <laughs> thought about that. But uh, but but the uh, I don't hues, know if they sell those anymore. I know. Actually, I think they probably do. Probably like like On the late eBay. night. Like you know. Yeah, it's a collector's item now. If you've got a clapper, yeah. I want to know you. <laughs> it's like as seen on TV kind of thing, you know. Sure. Um, but what about the hues of color? Is it like they're really higher end than uh, typical light bulbs? Because I I'm really into like good quality. You know, these days with like conserving energy, I totally want to conserve energy, but I don't like those coil bulbs because they emit such a blue light and it's such an awful I don't know, man. Color. I mean, I think it depends on the shade. Okay. Because I had a couple of those inside my lamps before this yeah. experiment started. I don't know. I don't even really know where they Didn't came really from. Didn't really bother you? No, because the lamp itself was so warm okay. that it like, it helped the color. But I know what you're saying. Yeah. The right hue is important. Uh, these are nice light bulbs. Cool. And there's two different, I actually have two different um, manufacturers. One is Hue, which is, it, well, yeah. it's Philips. They make the Hue line. Mm -hmm. um, and one is called LifeX. Mm. And it's, they work differently. They have mm -hmm. different apps. They do different things. It's, it's, it's a, it's a fucking circus in my house right now. I love it. With red and green and strobe lights and stuff. You have strobe? 
There is a strobe option. Oh, I would and you definitely know what? use that. <laughs> if you followed my Instagram, you would know that, Heather. We, I do follow you on Instagram. Well, I don't think you're following closely enough. Damn it. Okay. It's okay. I, I got some catching right. up to do. I know. <laughs> well, uh, how I, was your week? That sounds really nerdy and I like it. And um, mm. I feel a little guilty because I had a kind of a midweek Partay, Why which I normally don't that? do that. Well, you know, like I should be. You you want to be responsible. I want to be responsible, but yeah. working you know, for the weekend. Yeah, and I and but you know I, I have to say I was really pleased that I had this plan. I had a friend come into town. She's um, my one of my closest French friends. She is the girl that I taught English to in France. We've heard this story many times before. Um, she was uh, a young girl when I taught her English and uh, we are we've continued to be really close and so she's like my little sis from another mister um, as they say and she came <laughs> down to visit and we uh, we stayed in a nice hotel downtown and went to dinner and went to went to have some drinks with her wine people. She's in the wine business, so um, you know we really get treated very well. We like the sommelier comes over to the table and is pouring us all this wine and talking to us about like the regions. It's really really fun. Um, but really, like the French really know how to party. In fact, when I lived in France, I really learned how to party because they start late, they go to late, they often go to when the sun comes up. They go through many, 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 many bottles of wine, all different varieties, because they usually match it to their food. And so throughout the meal, we, I mean, I must have had five wine glasses out in front of me with different wines. Um, it was super fun. Uh, went back to the hotel really, really late, continued to buy more champagne. You know, it's just like, it's like they're, they're energizer bunnies. I don't know. They just wow. keep going. I, it, I paid some electrical bills this week. <laughs> Your life sounds pretty good. I know this, it, it was a good week. <laughs> I, I needed, it was like a nice departure for sure. It yeah. was really fun and I love her. Uh, I don't know if she listens to the show as often as I would like, but shout out to Lori if you're listening. Shout out to you, Lori. <laughs> Sounds like you got you got a you got a good situation going on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so much booze. <laughs> so this is a kind of a cool story that I found uh, earlier this week. Uh, well, I didn't find it. The Verge found it and wrote an article that I then read. But this is all about trains. Mm. I may have professed my love for trains in the past. If I haven't, I love trains. I love all trains. I love me Sh some trains Shitty too. trains, Shinkansen trains, anything in between, even an Amtrak, I'd do it. Hmm. So, uh, and, I, and I have actually done quite a bit of train travel. What about model trains? Had one as a kid. I like those. It was too. actually my dad's model train. It was really nice, but we'd set up at Christmas and it was like so my favorite thing in the whole world. Uh, so the China Railway Rolling Stock Corporation, perhaps you've heard of it, perhaps you haven't, I hadn't, showed off its latest prototype maglev train. These are fast trains. Um, in fact, I believe Japan has a prototype of this that's like going to be the fastest in the world. Wow. But for now, we're in China. The Chinese version can reach speeds of 600 kilometers per hour. That's like 373 miles per hour. That's fast. That is super fast. So it's not as fast as, you know, a, a big old jet plane at 30,000 feet, but it's fast. So that's faster than the TGV in France. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, because the Japanese trains are faster. This is this is going to be the fastest train that's in operation yeah. if all goes well. So for, awesome. for reference, uh, it, again, as I said, it's still in development, mm -hmm. would be able to go from Beijing to Shanghai that's a long way. Yeah. Big country. In 3.5 hours. Right now, a flight would take 4.5 hours. Wow. And that's Incredible. not even, and that's what wouldn't even factor in like, it, well, it's 4.4 hours because you got to go through TSA, you yeah. know, and we, it's like, no, it's like the trip itself would just be shorter. Mm -hmm. And trains are way cooler than planes. Way cooler. Like they're just the coolest. Yeah. You don't. I mean, you got to lay some rail, I suppose, but. <laughs> I don't know, or maybe they use existing rail. And no, but you get to look that. At, you, you don't really get to enjoy looking out the window on the plane like the whole time. I mean, it's you, you're up in the clouds, but like on a train, you really get to enjoy the countryside. And I don't know. I got my face pressed against a window on a plane. If I'm on a window, which yeah. is rare, but I think that's why I'm always in an aisle seat. Lately. Well, I am too because yeah. I I get antsy and I want to get up without annoying people yeah. or waking them up. Even worse, but I don't know. Anyway. anyway. 
this train will be super cool and will make the flight the like crappier option, which always just fills me with delight. I'm not really sure why. I'm not trying to like bankrupt the airline industry or anything. <laughs> I just want more trains. And the first thing I thought when I read this article was like, that is so cool. I want to go to China and get on this train. I want to oh, yeah. do that. Like go to China to It was sort of it. like the first time I took the channel mm -hmm. from London to Paris. And that I was, was like, exciting. this is so cool. I mean, that wasn't right around the corner anymore. But I remember when that was like I do too. hot yeah. shit. Yeah. Like, oh, it goes under the water mm -hmm. and it's so fast. It was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, we're living in the future. We That's really, for sure. we really are. So I love um, it. China, kudos to you. Expect a visit soon. You know, I, I know a lot of people who, you know, pe certain people gravitate to certain times uh, like in history. I, I'm like a futuristic person. I love, like, I look into the future. I like feel like I'm a modern woman. <laughs> but I have some friends who, like, they love the 40s and 50s, and they kind of, like, have this aesthetic, and they're really into, oh, like, yeah. history. And But, uh, yeah, yeah, this stuff excites me. I think it's, you know, it's funny that I've often thought... Okay, why do some people kind of like be like, this is my decade. I'm so fascinated. And by I'm this. just gonna kind of stay yeah. here, or wasn't even alive then, but I have so much affinity for it yep. that I'm gonna kind of make it part of my life. Yep. I don't know that I really have that, mm -hmm. but I find it fascinating. Me too. It's like why, like what what made you yeah. gravitate to that period, especially if you didn't experience and it. And it's different than nostalgia. Like I have lots of nostalgia for the 1980s, mm -hmm. well, the early 80s particularly, because we were little kids. Mm -hmm. So, but that's not like I'm not like, and I'm an 80s woman now. <laughs> Listen to 80s music, as you you know, going to 80s. It's like <laughs> I could take it way further, oh, of course. But I rather just be like, oh yeah, I love this song, yeah, you totally. know, kind of thing. So I don't know. If you I, love the 1940s, uh, write us at Hyatt. Have I know, such a good day. Do. I want to know who you are because I, <laughs> I I love it too. But I just don't think I could pull that off. Like, no. what are you doing, Sarah? Like, are you in a play? Or in fact, that's really funny. Yesterday, I was hiking around the Hollywood Reservoir. I don't know if you've been there. It's like kind of. Uh, uh, below I, the Hollywood sign. I've only been to the Silver Lake Reservoir, not the Hollywood. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's not it's not that fabulous. But there was two. There was a couple walking that were like there was no film crew. There was nothing. But they were in like '40s outfits. Uh huh. And the guy comes out of the, like the porta potty in this like full still, get up. Still and I'm gotta like, go. What's going on here? Yeah, still gotta go. Yeah. But there was no like I was assuming there was like a shoot or something. Yeah, it was interesting. Some people like you know like the the like rockabillies and like the, these certain cultures where people totally dress like everyday wear. Oh yeah. Of another decade. Oh sure, like all the time. I mean, people dress like vampires every day too. <laughs> That's true. Seems like that you're going way back to Transylvania at that point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so super weird aside, because we're like, we're just going off the rails now, but mm -hmm. so I know somebody from where I grew up who, she used to be my neighbor, I hung out with her quite a bit when we were little, but we didn't keep in touch. She went to a different high school, mm -hmm. like, I, in fact, I think she went to a different junior high, I don't know, we didn't keep in touch. And I... I had asked my mom uh, the other day, like, oh, whatever happened to, you know who, mm -hmm. and, um, and I guess that some people, like, okay, so you didn't paint the Mona Lisa, but like some people are recognized for how good they can replicate mm -hmm. the the way that the Mona Lisa, like the strokes and the paint that was used sure. and the technique and mm -hmm. the, you know, the, I don't know, looking at the horizon, whatever, for like a variety of like the world's greatest paintings. Sure. And this is a real thing. Mm hmm and apparently this friend of mine, um, well, not apparently, because I looked her up, but it's so cool and like different and somewhat bizarre. She, I guess she, you know, she studied in Paris and maybe still lives there and was like kind of well known in the art world as like the girl who could paint something mm -hmm. that's like a replica, but like super good. Yeah. Where the rest of, you know, like art classes, you're kind of like, I don't know, like, mm -hmm. well, here's my spin on it. Like, no, she could make it sure. look exactly the same. Um, but then would like if she was working on a painting for like a year or something, she would only dress in the era that the painting was painted. Wow. You got all this from just like searching her online? Well, 
it's pretty like wow. you can. F- it's re- it's there's a lot of information about it. That's super interesting. Well, yeah. So she gets but in the mood. We're talking like petticoats. Yeah, and like I mean it. You wow. know, and it, and girdles <laughs> and it, like where you're like whoa. Very interesting. Like, again, you think, like, that would be, like, a cool photo shoot. Oh, yeah. Well, like, that's your life? You know, because you're, like, you're, it's, like, a method acting, right? Like, oh, you yeah. live this character. You live this world. I'm going to look I her. I, I'd like her name. I'd like to look her up. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep it just because I, you know. Yeah, no, but, no, I hear you. She didn't ask me to do of this. Of course, of course. But I, I just, this is, this is, like, one of these extremes where I'm, like, that is, I just want to know why. You know, it's funny. Um, this actually is a perfect segue to what I'm going to to talk about next because okay. <laughs> that's that's how you do a segue <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um but uh but yeah like like people who you're not super close with that sort of you know float by your life and they really kind of jar you like they make you think for you know you don't know them very well but you're sort of yeah what they're doing with their lives just sort of strikes you and it like changes you kind of you know yeah. like um i just i read this article um and uh it was in the, the new york times that it was a study about sort of social interactions and well-being and how the more kind of these weak ties where you know we've talked about this before where like you run into someone when you're walking otis you know and it, it's like a stranger it's like someone in the neighborhood and you have this fun little conversation on the corner oh me and, and javier every morning exactly um you know those types of little small relationships that you have um can can lead to big things can lead to you know jobs can lead to opportunities of you know on the big scale but it also can affect you on such a deep level like you 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 it's very important to have those moments where you say hello and have pleasantries with strangers because you just never know you with your close group of friends you you don't expect a lot of mystery because you know your friends you have like similar interests that's why you're close but uh having these little interactions with these strangers can you know change your life like for example my last place that i lived i lived next door to an art dealer we weren't like friends but we would we would run into each other all the time in the neighborhood Hmm. and have these deep philosophical conversations i always think of her i always go how's she doing Hmm. we don't talk but like she affected my life you know, this this woman I always run into on the corner down the street, uh, this old woman, she works at a uh, place down the street. I always I sort of think about her every time I go by the corner. You right. know, like, like is she going to be there? Is she OK? Because she told me all about her husband, you know, and like I know a little bit about her life, you know, and, and but I, I think about these people. And it's funny, I have, you know, you, I'm sure you have a ton of people that you think about. You don't realize you're even thinking about them. You know, they're not close. You don't go to barbecues with them or celebrate their birthdays. No, but, but they're part of my day. And it makes you happier. The study was basically saying, like, it leads to a happier life to have. It feels more, com- you know, you have more yeah. of a community, you know, and, and having those relationships and cultivating those and not just sticking in your little inner sanctum group really broadens broadens your horizons and opens your mind you know yeah like knowing that like you know one of the quotes from the article is like knowing that your neighbor is an accomplished like dancer like mine's a an accomplished like music producer he and he, he makes music down there all the time it's like that kind of adds a texture to your day you know it's like oh wow okay like now i know when he pulls out his garbage cans I'm like i know what that guy does like it makes it a little more interesting you know hmm anyway. yeah I've never really thought about what Javier does for work. Mm. He does a lot of standing in his driveway. I know that much. Well, again, he's the neighborhood watch, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, it, I, I, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, there are a couple of people that have yappy dogs, and so I, I'm not really very happy when I see them because mm-hmm. their dogs are annoying. But yeah, there's there's a woman on. Uh, she sells like fruit and stuff on mm-hmm. the corner uh, yeah. by the school. Mm-hmm. And she is, she's there really early in the morning and she, well, she's packed up by the after- afternoon if I walk by. But I mean, we're friends. Yeah. You know, I'll stop and talk to her for a few minutes. She loves Otis. And if I see her anywhere else around the neighborhood, which I do every once in a while when she's living her life. You doing acknowledge a, her. A, a, oh, yeah, yeah. Of course I do. She's my friend. But, and I would invite her to a barbecue. And yeah, again, don't really care about anything else except that she's nice and I don't know I just I like smiling at strangers oh I do too and that I was that's sort of what I wanted to encourage is like yeah smiling at strangers having pleasantries but last year I met some random person at a party 
and she called me this week to talk about work. So you never know. Yeah, that's very true. You never know. You G- never give know. Give peace a chance and people too. Yes, this is true. Uh, what we should also give you a chance to do is know a little bit more about our show. And that is time for Patreon. Dot com slash have such a good day. Very true. That is our <laughs> URL and you should commit it to memory. In fact, make it a bookmark on a browser of your choice, mobile <laughs> or desktop. So Patreon is a community uh, effort. It is a way for creative people like Heather and myself Mm -hmm. in a variety of endeavors. Music, you mentioned music producers or dancers or artists or podcasters Mm -hmm. or anything a writer and all like it, it, it it's endless any creative project that you want to do patreon can help you gain the funds to be able to support yourself doing it and doing what you love and what you're good at create a community along the way we are part of that community and we'd like you to be too if you'd like to know more about our variety of tiers tiers meaning you could for as little as one dollar a day You can join our community. You get a little extra stuff. You get our video feed right away. Mm -hmm. You get our, well, you get our bonus audio. Well, and then, you know, bonus $5, you get an extra little time lapse video, a little behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. For 10, you get to be part of our Discord community. um, Or you get like an extra random video that we produce each week, which you never know what you're going to get. It's true. It's all very exciting. It's like when when you'd get a bag of stickers mm-hmm. when you were a kid. Oh, I love that. And they were a dollar, but you didn't know what was in the inside. <laughs> and so you just try to pick the best bag. I mean, you got to love a little mystery. <sighs> Can you believe stickers were a dollar? That was a real thing, at least in my town. Oh, man, I love sn- stickers. Wow. Anyway, we everybody who's who's a patron, we love you. We thank you. Mm-hmm. You're the best. Uh, we'd like to join. We'd like to join. We're part of our own community. We'd like others to join <laughs> it. And you could help spread the word. So if you if you enjoy the show, tell a friend, tell a family member, even tell your drunk uncle. We want to grow. Or the, pr- the lady on the street selling some coconuts. Or that. Yes. We would like to grow our community. And we'd like to shout out a few new patrons. Nate became a $5 patron. Hey, Nate. Kimberly Abrams, she became a $10 patron. What up, Kimberly? And Matthew Baldwin is the $1 Coast Guard. He's helping us keep this boat afloat. Are you one of the Baldwins or just a cousin? (laughs) Maybe you're the the one who like never got into acting. Wow. Let us know. (laughs) We want to know, Matthew. And real quick before we, we move on. Just a little note. We've 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 kind of been doing some behind the scenes house cleaning on our YouTube uh, account, and we have noticed that we've been getting more subscribers, which is great. Um, but just for anybody who might visit our our channel on YouTube for the first time, the way it works is bonus uh, video is just for patrons. Five dollars and up, get the bonus video. Unless you want to just get the regular video, that's up to you. But uh, anybody who watches our show on YouTube. Bonus is just for patrons, but you do get the regular video. Now, it is a little delayed because mm-hmm. because regular video goes out to patrons right away. That's kind of the incentive to be a patron. Exactly. If you want to talk about, you know, if you want to hear what we're talking about when we talked about it and not delayed, hopefully you'll, you'll go the Patreon route. But we do want to offer the video for free to everybody. So that's kind of how... how if it wasn't clear, that's how we're going to do it going forward. Yeah, and and hopefully listening to even some older videos will incentivize you to want to know what we're talking about. Or even watching them. And watching. Yeah. <laughs> watching and listening. Watching and listening. Eyes and ears, people. You could watch and not listen. You could do that. You could just be like, listen, s- listen to some like metal They're music. They're so and- pretty, but I <laughs> hate what they say. Let's <laughs> mute it. That would be fine. I don't even care. We'd be okay with whatever you guys decide to do. Right. <laughs> just uh, support us and email us. Yes, please do. Uh, Feedback super important. We take it really seriously. And if you if you have a question or a comment or a thought or idea or anything. Uh, let us know. We read everything. It might take a minute for us to get back to you. A lot of times we'll shout it out on the show. So so listen. Uh, hi, have such a good day dot com is where you can reach us. Yes, you can. And thanks to our new patrons. Good to have you. Uh, yeah. We hope you like it here. We certainly <laughs> do. Cozy. So, so uh, Heather, I was thinking this week, mm-hmm. this is sort of along the lines of me being like, what's my week been like? Did I do anything unusual? Because sometimes they all blend together. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine who is, uh, he lives in Houston, so I see him like maybe once a year. Uh, and he and a bunch of us are, you know, we're on group chats all day, every day. 
about whatever and mostly about Game of Thrones and sports, but mm-hmm. sometimes it's about other things. And he, he, we have a health channel in Slack, you know, and it's, you talk about things that are related to health. And he was like, guys, I'm like on the floor. Something happened to my back. Like I can't get up. Mm-hmm. My kid's asleep. His daughter is like not even two. Oh my God. And like my wife's not home. And like, I can't get up. It's like, I've hurt myself really badly. And you hear about this every so often. Someone will be like, you know, well, I mean, you hear about this with people who are elderly. You know, you fall and you hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. But but you tweak your back. That happened to me like a month ago. Yeah. I mean, but he was like, he couldn't just sort of like painfully get up. He couldn't get up. Oh, God. And he was alone. And I don't totally know how he was chatting with us. Maybe he just had his phone in his pocket and was like, was able to whatever. I didn't ask. But. You know, I thought about it and I'm like, this is a healthy dude Mm -hmm. who like plays basketball and like, you know, runs around after a little kid all day and, Mm -hmm. you know, is, is, is out and about for work. And, and he was like, I don't even know what happened. Like I just, something happened where I think he tried to pick something up, Mm -hmm. you know, but it it was something that was fairly innocuous Mm -hmm. and, you know, so we're all kind of like, are you okay? And like, you know, offering advice and, oh, I had, you know, did this before and here's the stretch maybe you should try mm-hmm. or like roll over, like whatever, trying to just be helpful. And the whole time I'm just thinking, well, if that was me, what if that was me right now, like in my apartment, like on the floor mm-hmm. with like Otis looking at me and like super confused mm-hmm. and like me being like, hey guys, like, and like if I had locked my door, you wouldn't even have been able to help me because no. you'd have to have like, broken a window which is on the second floor like yeah that wouldn't that's no, impossible it's, it's crazy to think about that my landlord would have had to come over and yeah. help and like what if i have to pee what if you were naked right what if you're naked and you have to pee, <laughs> the pee what if you peed already the pee, the, 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 the pee thing and and it could be worse but let's just stick with pee the pee thing is like where my mind immediately goes. Yeah. It's also where my mind immediately goes if I think about getting stuck in an elevator. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what if you have to pee? Yeah. Because eventually, if you have to that bad, like you can't hold it for 12 hours. I would have to. Something uh, yeah. terrible would have to happen. Especially if you had other people in that elevator. And oh, had- <laughs> worst nightmare. Every time I get in an elevator, I think if this stops and I have to pee. It's funny, I just watched Speed yesterday. It was a <laughs> are there, perfect timing. Are there pee jokes? No, it's a, it's an elevator. People get trapped in an elevator. And Keanu Speed? Reeves. Speed? Uh, I thought it's about a bus. It is, but oh. it starts out with an elevator and they get stuck in an elevator. Oh, yeah. I see. That's funny. I had never seen it. It's so. not so much it's the claustrophobia part of it, although I'm sure that would kick in. It's the... I don't have access to a no. bathroom. What if I just had a bunch of water? Yeah. Because girl got to go. Mm-hmm. And then what? And then, I don't know. I, I don't know. So anyway, back to the health thing. I'm sure my buddy's going to be okay. But it just got me thinking mm-hmm. about, and you know, pack problems are, I, I, I know some folks who've had like debilitating back problems who are not oh, yeah. old at all. Yeah. Just, you know, just kind of unlucky or sports injury or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, I've had, plenty of my own health problems, but I've never had something like that. I've pinched a nerve in my back plenty of times where I'm like, I'm super uncomfortable. It's hard to sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just like annoyed and, yeah. and irritable about it, but not like I can't get up off the floor. It's never been like that. No, I've never had anything so, that debilitating. So for all y'all who say my hand is raised, I've had something like that happen, you know, where I'm like, like I actually have to be like helped up or, and or have to go to the hospital and like figure out what's wrong. It just makes me really appreciate my damn health. It really puts the things into perspective oh. and, it, and it really trivializes like other problems. That sure. Is for sure. Yes. And, um, you know, take care of your back, lift with your legs. No, 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 it's true. I mean, I, I, I knocked my back out for a couple of days. It wasn't as bad as your friend at all, but it did really make me be like, don't complain, stop grousing about the, this and that. It's like, you well, can't because move for everything two days. has to take a back seat to everything the fact that, does. that, yeah, like the, you, you can barely get around. Even those annoying things that are like you have to call the insurance company and you have to pay your bills. It's like that's you're still gonna have to do that, but like you're really you're, in pain. You're also gonna be in pain. Yeah. yeah. So definitely, I agree because I, I feel the same way. I'm like I really, really am so grateful for my health. Yes, and there are a variety of horrible ailments, and I wish none of them upon any of us. But I. Yeah, I, I, the, the stuck on the floor, can't get up thing yeah. is, 
I don't. That might be more claustrophobic than being stuck in an elevator. Quite honestly. Yeah. Like where you you can't help yourself. You like you are not in control. That's what I think yeah. is becomes the claustrophobia. Is right. Like, right. I, that's what drives me crazy. We were. Um, I drove to Big Sur last weekend, and we there was a construction zone, and it's a one lane road, and they stopped everybody, but it was like 35 minutes or longer we were stopped and you had no idea you were like what's going on you can't see anything there's all these tractors you're you're like sitting in your car like stuck like there's you can't turn around yeah. that drives me crazy because it's like i have no idea what you know when we're gonna move like it's th that whole notion of like i'm trapped i i have no control in this situation i can't drive up the sturt hill and like try to escape here yeah you know, yeah you're just like trapped i hate that yeah every every so often when you'll see a um like it'll be a hurricane evacuation from mm -hmm. a city mm -hmm. and you see these aerial photos of the the freeways oh God, yeah. and oh i God. think like and it kind of looks like a zombie apocalypse yeah. right you know like mm -hmm. where you're like uh w at what point do you get out and walk oh my god because I can't. It, you know it's like ooh, it's I like very brings out the worst anxiety and although i think if it was apocalyptic you know related i would step up to the plate and I would save people. <laughs> okay. I okay, Heather. <laughs> we'll hold you to that one. <laughs> Step it up, Heather. I will. Kill I'm going to do Kill that zombie because I'm not doing it. You said you would. <laughs> well, I don't know. I might, I might feed you to the zombies if you, if you treat me poorly. Um, but uh, I actually, I mentioned at the top of the show that I, I tend to wander around store and stores aimlessly forgetting why I was there in the first place. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a new thing for me. And really? I was thinking about this. Well, like, I mean, I think over the years it's gotten worse and I'm sure partially it's age and memory and whatnot and yeah. ADD and just being unfocused and too much stuff going on. But honestly, I think the reason why is there's too many products. And I feel like what happens is I, I go into the store, I go to get a toothpaste and there's, there's too many versions of a brand of toothpaste. I'm like, well, wait, no, I, I mean, I want... I want this one, but then that one, and I just get so overwhelmed, and then I get distracted, and then I cannot even remember why I went to the place. <laughs> but I think that, that this is, you know, this is a, a anxiety-inducing thing. I think other people can relate to this. I, I think for me, and this is why a lot of these smaller companies have popped up, you know, places that are highly curated, like these mattress companies and like, you know, suitcase companies that offer for 300 bucks flat, you can get this aesthetically pleasing suitcase, don't right. have to like go into like a big box store and you know or Macy's and look in the luggage section there's just all this junk I'm you know it's all part of an, a bigger anxiety about landfill and uh, this throwaway culture that we live in I mean it's getting worse and worse like people are buying really cheap stuff they want a deal you know people want to spend as l least amount of money as possible for their things but they want more things because it's addictive and it's this whole um, vicious cycle um but this is one of the reasons why i like having moved into this smaller place i have learned to i like the simplicity i mm -hmm. like having like a small amount of things i am enjoying selling things it, i feel more at peace because of it um you know this is obviously why there's so many of these new companies and people who are doing closet arranging and Isn't that less is more Marie Kondo's Marie whole Kondo, thing? the whole thing I've and I've seen friends who never do that seen too. any of her stuff but that's all anyone can talk about I know it's the, it's definitely there's a huge movement of that yeah. and I get it because you know I, I think it's great I think it's great too and I think that like nowadays mo I, I've heard these statistics where most of the you know it feels really good when you donate something you donate some clothes to like a thrift store most of those clothes go to the landfill. I mean, I'm sorry, not not all of those clothes are going to get, you know, sold. Um, but anyway, it just sort of made me think about how my lifestyle has changed and how I would rather have like a small amount of like uh, well-designed things that aren't throw away so I can hold on to them for like 10 years, keep it so I don't have to keep like throwing things away. And I, and I sort of wish people would think about that a little bit more because I, I think that we've it's gotten a little out of hand and I don't know how you feel about it I know that we're buying bigger places so we can store more of our things you know and I feel like um you I don't know should, I you should listen to it, it never gets old a consignment podcast that I produce I know it's about this exact thing <laughs> and all the ways that you can be more sustainable as a shopper cool, and still get all the stuff that you want yeah I know I, I saw your promotion last week I'll check it out I mean, this is exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I didn't know you guys were talking about that. I thought you were talking about like how to get a good deal and, and that kind it's, of thing. It's that too. All right. It's that too. Cool. That sounds good. 
Um, anyway, all right. So want to uh, shout out a couple emails that we got this week. Uh, a new friend, um, her name is Melanie. She texted me today. She said, love your podcast. Hey, Melanie. Um, and Vince Power wrote us. He said, I had to upgrade. How else could I hear all the things I could potentially be doing wrong in the dating world directly from actual real life cute women? Oh, thanks, Vince. Very sweet. So sounds like Vince uh, went up to the $5 bala he did. level. Yep. Very cool. We also got an email from Mark who says, just wanted to say thank you for using Patreon. I wish I could, but uh, unable to contribute more than I do. But I hope the support is covering your expenses and time and energy. It's getting worse listening to podcasts do cringy ads for brands that the hosts clearly have no passion for. Breaks also cl- kill the flow of the conversation. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. Thank you, Mark. We Memorial said have Day weekend. Such a good Memorial Day weekend. Sorry, you're right. <laughs> he did say that. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mark. Yeah, th- thank you, Mark. We we you know we, we're ad free. Um, for the time being, I mean, you never know what's going to happen in you the never future. Know. It, it's not foreshadowing of any kind, but no. we're very happy with Patreon and we hope to continue. And thanks for, for appreciating that, Mark. Uh, one more thing. Um, this Miguel from Mexico, he says that he is, has been a follower of yours since your twit days, Sarah. Um, he says he used Hi, to Miguel. write you a lot as your Mexico City fan. He he had a whole spiel about, remember when we were talking about like Black Panthers and Jaguars and what's the difference? So he had this yeah. whole thing on that. He thought that was really interesting. He said there's a cool nonprofit organization from Mexico City called Black Jaguar White Tiger. And it saves big felines in Mexico, USA, oh. and Latin America and rehabilitates them. Oh. And he says that they have a really cool Instagram. I thought I would shout that out. I wonder if you can visit them. You might be able to. We'll check it out at Black Jaguar White Tiger, all one word. This is on Instagram. Um, love I to will. hear you both every day. Have a tremendous day, Miguel from Mexico. Thanks, Miguel. You're the best. That's so nice. The best. I was actually because I like to torture myself. I I look at lots of like rescue organizations. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes my dog does on Instagram because you know he has his own Instagram account, so that's just him looking at it, not me. Mm-hmm. But um, I discovered this. It's like a dog rescue center in uh, Phuket, Thailand, mm. and a lot of street dogs. You know, so oh, like yeah. the sob stories are on another level. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I usually start crying, and then I'm like, close the browser. I don't know how you close do the that. browser. I, I couldn't do it. Well, because I like to donate to these. Yeah, organiz- you know, me it's too. like I want to help, and I don't want to pretend that it's not happening. Yeah. Um, but anyway. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the. It's something that starts with an S. I'll I'll remember it for next week, but um, yeah, I think I speaking of next week, I think we're gonna save yeah. the rest of our witty prose uh-huh. for the following our episode. Yakety yakking, our yakety yakking. We've we've done we've done a lot, and you have not talked back, <laughs> or you have so polite, but we haven't heard it. <laughs> you know, because. Because we're in a vacuum. You're not here with us right now. <laughs> but we wish you were. It'd be fun to have a little we barbecue do. together. That'd be so fun. All right. Uh, $5 baller. Stick around. Bonus show. Bonus topic, rather, coming up next. Um, until next week. Until next week. For everybody else, thanks for watching and listening. I'm Sarah. Thanks so much. I'm Heather. And have such a good day.